Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Thank you for being an awesome pledge hammer on Patreon, Kratos' forgotten son, Chris Patrow. Hello and welcome to the WrestleTalk Mecha News! I am Luke Owen. Have yourself a young buck size super click party! Super clicks, Jesus. Genuinely hurt. Genuinely, genuinely hurt my n- Give us a subscribe, press the thumbs up, and leave a comment down below to answer our question of the day. What did you make of AEW's first show, Double or Nothing? And we've got a packed show of AEW news for you today, including the real reason John Moxley joined the promotion, future pay-per-view plans for the company, and Vince McMahon's possible reaction to his talent praising the show. As it seems that everyone in the wrestling bubble is talking about All Elite Wrestling and their debut show, Double or Nothing. We had huge numbers for our live stream of the show on Saturday night. It's all we're seeing being talked about on social media, and for the first time since I joined WrestleTalk, I've had non and lapsed fans ask me about All Elite Wrestling and what it's all about. And it seems as though even those in WWE were watching, with Peyton Royce tweeting about her boyfriend Sean Spears as he entered the pre-show casino battle royale, Sasha Banks tweeting about loving the women's four-way match, Big E wishing everyone in Redacted the best of luck ahead of the show, and Scott Dawson of The Revival tweeting about about the Young Bucks versus Lucha Brothers tag match. Carl Anderson tweeted to say that he misses his former Bullet Club cohorts, and Matt Hardy also sent out his wishes before posting pictures of he and his brother Jeff Hardy posing with the Lucha Brothers and the Young Bucks. One person who didn't tweet about the show, however, was Natalia. And despite that, there has been some speculation that WWE could punish her in some way for her uncle Bret Hart appearing on the show to unveil the AEW World Championship. Dave Meltzer adds that WWE might not do anything as it will reflect poorly on them as a company, but says everyone in the McMahon family has to be ungodly furious at all those people who were tweeting. They can't be happy with their own talent tweeting about the rival show and putting it over. The McMahon family of course includes Vince McMahon, Stephanie and Triple H, and the best in the world, Shane McMahon. And this comes off the back of a report from Figure 4 Online that Stephanie McMahon called All Elite Wrestling competition in a meeting of WWE talent ahead of Money in the Bank last weekend. One of those people being tweeted about was Sean Spears, who debuted for the company in the pre-show Casino Battle Royale, which was eventually won by Hangman Page. <laughs> It was widely expected that Spears would be part of AEW, given his history with Executive Vice President Cody Rhodes. But Spears has said in a post-show media interview that he's not officially signed with the company yet. He said, at this moment, there's nothing in writing. When the opportunity came to be at Double or Nothing, I dove all over it. I didn't ask any questions. I didn't care. I knew this was groundbreaking and history-making, and I wanted to be a part of that. It wasn't all good news for AEW talents, however, as it's been reported by Lucha Empire in Texas that both Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix of the Lucha Brothers picked up injuries in their tag match against the Young Bucks. The promotion tweeted that their event was now cancelled, citing injuries meant the Lucha Brothers couldn't travel. However, those injuries can't be too serious, as AAA have announced that a rematch for the tag titles between the Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers will take place at their Verano D and <sighs> will take place at their Verano D Escandalo show on. Dang it! Will take place at their Verano D and dang it! will take place at their Verano D. Escandalo show on June 16th. Doubt I said most of that right. But the question is, how well did Double or Nothing do on pay-per-view? Prior to Double or Nothing, there was a lot of chatter online about the price point of the show, with some fans thinking that in an age where you can get WWE shows for 10 bucks a month, along with all their other content, $50 was too much to charge for a single show. This led to some speculation that the actual buy rate for Double or Nothing might be quite low. However, according to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, the buy rate for Double or Nothing will be pretty solid, with Big Daddy Melt saying the initial feeling is that AEW's first show has significantly outperformed all in on pay-per-view, even at the much higher price point. He added, all indications are pretty darn good, better than it makes any sense to do. During Double or Nothing, the company also announced their next big show, All Out, which will take place in Chicago one year on from their groundbreaking all-in show in 2018. While unconfirmed, it's expected this show will feature the AEW Championship match between Hangman Adam Page 
who won the Casino Battle Royale on the buy-in show, and Chris Jericho, who beat Kenny Omega in the show's main event. It's also been reported that the company's next show, Fight for the Fallen and Fighter Fest, will not be on pay-per-view the same way that Double or Nothing was and All Out will be. Whether that means they'll be streamed online or whether they'll be for live crowds only remains to be seen. But the price point of Double or Nothing is clearly something AEW have thought about, with Cody telling media after the show that All Elite Wrestling will look at Double or Nothing and All Out as the company's tentpole shows, and that they won't be doing pay-per-views every month the same way WWE currently do. He told the press, we're not going to do pay-per-view every month. I realize it was $50, and to ask people to part with their money, you got to make sure it's worth it. Not every show is going to be four or five hours either. During these media scrums, Cody also talked about how proud he was of AEW's diverse roster of talent, telling press, I'm in an interracial marriage, and I've learned a lot that I would have never known. One time I told Brandy, I said, I don't see color, and she said, well, you don't see my experience. And I thought, Oh, you're right. I can't just say that. You need to be able to see that experience and at least understand it. The best wrestlers are going to field the game, and that's a very diverse profile, and I'm really proud of that. And these comments have drawn praise from Congresswoman for NY14, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who tweeted, This exchange is a promising peek into what growth looks like in our national discourse on race. Thanks for sharing your experience in this powerful moment, Cody Rhodes. AOC to AEW confirmed. And perhaps she can set up a match with Ali, who joined Ali. Alex Marvez, Excalibur, and Jim Ross on commentary for the women's four-way match between Nyla Rose, Britt Baker, Kylie Ray, and Awesome Kong. Ali's first AEW match will take place at Fight for the Fallen in Jacksonville, where she'll take on Brandi Rhodes. And she told me in an interview last week that she would like to see her Impact Wrestling partner in crime, Rosemary, join All Elite Wrestling. Here's what she had to say. Um, you mentioned your your love for, for Impact Wrestling and, and the, the great roster of talent they've got over there. Um, I can only imagine you know, people like Rosemary and, and Jordan Grace and Tyre and, and things like that. Is there anyone from uh, Impact that you would like to see come over to AEW, even if it's just for a show or so? Or are we going to get a reunion of the Demon and Bunny? I mean, obviously, if I could have my Demon, uh, it would be incredible. Um, so, yes, obviously, I would love to have my partner in crime with me uh, at AEW. Um, but every single girl on that roster has something to offer, and they're all... Um, I've worked with all of them, and they're all amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, I just want to see them succeed, whether it's, you know, at Impact or wherever, right? Um, but if I can have anyone, I mean, come on. You know I would have my demon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you can listen to that whole interview right now by subscribing to the Wrestle Ramble podcast, where we also spoke with Casino Battle Royale standout MJF, who had some choice words to say about me. Uh, sorry, I, I've just had an email. Yeah, no, hold, on, hold, hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on a second. Luke, if I can interject, I've had to listen to your crappy British accent now for about 10 minutes asking another bunch of questions. I haven't gotten the answer wow. one, so allow me to just jump in right here. Are you aware of that, Luke, or is your feeble little brain not capable of handling it? I'm very much aware of, of that you are in uh, the match. In fact, we were doing our predictions for the show today, and you were down as the winner uh, from various different people in the office. So you're actually a firm favorite to win here. You're not my firm favorite to win, but uh, you are a, a firm yeah, favorite. Luke, I, I don't think anybody actually cares about your opinion, thank God. Luke Owens, AEW confirmed. But while we may not see the AEW debuts of Rosemary or the other one, Luke Owen, anytime soon, we did see some shock debuts at double or nothing. It had been rumored a couple of months ago that popular indie tag team Super Smash Brothers would be joining All Elite Wrestling, and the pair made their debut at Double or Nothing on Saturday after the tag match between Best Friends and Angelico and Jack Evans. The team of Evil Uno and Stu Grayson jumped both teams following the match and attacked them with their minions, posing to the crowd before the lights went out again. Super Smash Brothers have a long history with the Young Bucks going back to pro wrestling Gorilla, and they are former tag champs in PWG and Shikara, and have also wrestled for Evolve and Ring of Honor. A debut that got a significantly louder reaction, on the other hand, was that of the former Dean Ambrose, John Moxley. It was reported back in January that Moxley was going to leave WWE when his contract expired at the end of April, with the former Shield member tweeting a video of his new character and style the day after his contract expired. This led to many people believing he would debut for the company at Double or Nothing, despite Moxley filming MMA movie Cage Fighter at the same time. While the speculation is now over, 
However, as Moxley came out at the end of the show after the main events between Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho, attacking Y2J, the referee, and brawling with Omega through the crowd and onto the stage. And now All Elite Wrestling President Tony Khan has revealed that AEW didn't approach Moxley following the news that he was leaving WWE, and it was in fact the other way round. He told the press following the show, as soon as he was out of his WWE deal and wanted to talk to people, he came to me, and I was really excited to talk to him when he was able to talk. I'm very excited he's a part of the roster. Back in January, it was reported by Pro Wrestling Torch's Wade Keller that Moxley was unhappy with his character direction in WWE, with Dave Meltzer adding on Wrestling Observer Radio, that one of the main reasons for his unhappiness was Moxley's hatred of scripted promos and doing hokey poop. And that seemingly has been confirmed, with AEW revealing Moxley's first t-shirt for the company, calling for unscripted violence. I'm sure Jimmy Havoc is very excited about all this. And Moxley has now cut his first promo for the company, which was released by AEW's Twitter account earlier today. One day... They will all come to my funeral just to make sure that I stay dead. But today is not that day. I'm alive. My heart is still beating and I'm breathing. Fresh air for the first time in a long time. My name is John Moxley and I am on a mission to reclaim my soul. And I know I'm not the only one who thinks, you know, it's about time this industry got a facelift. So make no mistake about it, this is an official declaration of war tonight to anyone who wants to get in my way and anybody who stands in AEW's way. We have a mission to knock the pillows of this industry on their ass. We ain't reading history books anymore, baby. We writing them. This is what you call a paradigm shift. With Moxley seemingly starting a feud with Kenny Omega right out the gate, it's been reported by Dave Meltzer that Moxley will be a regular wrestler for AEW once their weekly TV show starts later this year on TNT, which is rumored to be in October. He said they pretty much established to me when the show was over, in the singles division it's Cody, Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, John Moxley and Adam Page. They're gonna be the big five, and if Pac comes back, he may end up close to that. And AEW have announced Moxley's first match for the company will be at Fighter Fest next month, but he doesn't have an opponent announced as of yet. Khan also revealed that Moxley has signed a multi-year deal with the company, and confirmed Meltzer's report that he will be a regular on TV when that starts later this year, but added that while the company dates are quieter, he's free to work for other promotions. And the first of those dates has been announced, with Northeast Wrestling announcing that Moxley will face Pentagon Jr. on August 16th in New York, on a show that will also feature Dustin Rhodes, LA Park, and Moxley's IRL wife, Renee Young. Renee Young Young to AEW confirmed? Sadly not, as despite being under a WWE contract, Young has made a few meet and greet appearances for NEW before. So don't read too much into this appearance. Renee Young to AEW confirmed. But before Moxley gets to Poughkeepsie, he's heading over to Japan. This new video posted by Moxley on Twitter reveals that he will be wrestling for New Japan against Juice Robinson on June 5th at the finals of the Best of the Super Juniors. For weeks now, New Japan have been teasing a mystery opponent for Robinson, which was rumored to be revealed on the night itself. However, New Japan have now confirmed that Moxley vs. Juice Robinson will take place on a show that will also see Jay White vs. Hiroshi Tanahashi and the finals of the best of the super juniors. So much for those rumors that Moxley wanted to get out of wrestling altogether, eh? Thank you for watching and a special thank you to our pledge hammers on Patreon, some of which you can see scrolling their way into my stomach. Click the video over there to see my review of Disney's live action remake of Aladdin. And do fans really hate the new WWE title? Watch the latest edition of our new show Screen Grapple by clicking the video over there. I've been Luke Cohen and that were Mecha News.